Hi guys, thought I'd get started on the Studebaker doors today. Quite a door. Um, you can see the bottom of it's completely rotted out. It's all quite rusty. Right here, it's very thin. I can crumble it off. The only thing that seems rugged is where they originally put that. They used to smear that tar-like stuff in there just to, for soundproofing and so the door doesn't rumble when you go down the road. But yeah, she's pretty rough shape. Not a whole lot of steel left. So what we're going to have to do is preserve what's here and cut it out to a point where we get rid of most of the bad stuff. But a lot of it is just, just not great. I'm going to leave this all intact until I get the patches made and kind of get an idea where they're going to go. This piece seems to be quite rusted out. This is a heavier piece that, that goes up the door just a little bit, about five or six inches. It's what holds the bottom hinge. This is the other door, and it also has a neat little thing right here. I'm going to hold the camera sideways. That'll make it upright. Bud. Uh, I guess these doors were built by Bud. I don't know. And then Studebaker must have contracted out to them for doors. I'm guessing. <laughs> I don't know. If anybody knows, put it. Uh, give me a comment. Let me know. I'm kind of curious to see what, what the deal was on that. Anyway, so this one seems to be slightly more intact. So between the two doors, I'll try to figure out a, a good way to make patches for the inner skin and then to hook it to the outer skin. This one's thin too, boy. That's really that's really thin right there. I just actually I could poke my finger through it pretty much. I just did. That's bad. Start making patches. Kind of showed up at the barn and he's got some ideas on this door. Yeah. Um, it's got a curve. Okay, it's got Yeah, the, which is something I didn't really it's got a curve for the outer skin. And then there's also a crease going here. Yeah. So, and then that curves too, doesn't it? That looks, well, that's fairly straight. That's fairly straight. But um, how I would make it is, I would make, I would make an L-bend piece, right? That goes here. That, that is what the door is, the outside skin is actually going so to attach. So from, from the outer skin, you'd L it back to here and yeah. come up. Then you can, you can take that piece and you can work how the outside skin is going to be curved pretty easily with like the shrinker, shrinker stretcher, you know? Yeah. Okay, so I'd have, I'd leave enough material on this up bend to go past this. But then I won't be able to shrink stretch it. Well, you might have to two piece that too. You could do a small L bend. Right. And then put a, just a regular flat plate there and do that. Yeah, so and I can I shrink and stretch into that. Yep, yep, you yep. You could do it that way. So it's gonna be a lot of piecing and welding just to get the shapes right. I think you could do it in like three pieces if you do it that way. And then a flat piece here that follows this contour and then you could stencil it or tack it together and then grind that corner mm -hmm. where it needs to be. That'd be a good way to do That's it. your idea? That's my idea. That's yeah, what I think I, I like it. Yeah. I like it. I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think this out a minute more. I mean, I'd rather think for an hour than weld for two hours. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good idea. Of course, I sit around doing a bunch of thinking and... Uh, Eventually you just got to start well, doing it. Sooner or later you got to just do it. Yeah. Yep. You're right. Doing is better than thinking sometimes. <laughs> yep, you're right. You don't want to be disabled by thought. No. Because if I think hard enough, I'll just go home and sit on the TV. <laughs> on the TV. <laughs> well, yeah, well, you can go down and, and start getting me more views on my videos. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <sighs> okay, well, I'm going to think for another minute or two. Yeah, I'll be back. All right, good thing I've been thinking on this because I'm still thinking. Here's another thing I just noticed here. This angle, and I can't see it so good on this door, but on the other door, there's enough material still left on this door that it's, it's showing me this angle. So it's not like the door goes straight back and drops in. It actually has an angle back. So that's another thing i got to try to recreate is that angle. And it looks like this little section right here shows me what I got to do. It does get a little bit of distorted going through the shear. So anyway, I'm going to have to tap this out a little bit. Just, just to straighten it up. Nothing too major. Just got to clean it up. Get it straight. Also puts a little corkscrew to it when I run it through the shear. I guess it's just from, you know, cutting such a, a narrow strip. 
Maybe I've been better off cutting a three inch piece and then cutting it in half. I didn't go that way, I just went this way. Seems like it'll work out. I'm getting close. Uh, as I look down at, well, it's very wavy. Once I get it bent in the brake, it'll, it'll straighten out quite a bit too. But give it a little twist. Get her laying kind of flat, looking like we're getting there. All this stuff takes time. Time and patience. I've always worked on stuff. Always, ever since I was a kid, I'd be working on things. If there's one advantage I've had in my life, it's, well, two ways of looking at it. It's either patience or just not being smart enough to know when to quit. That's not too bad right there. So, I'm going to get my length and I'm going to cut it the length. It's pretty straight. And then I'm going to put it in the brake and put the bend on it. I'm going to bend a half an inch. And then I'm going to use a shrinker stretcher to uh, follow this contour. And instead of trying to, because I was looking at the door, Connor and I were, were both looking at this door, and we're noticing that the way it's laying here, it's, it's deflecting it. It's making it change shape. So I'm going to go back to my original shape where the door has got to fit, because I want it to fit the door opening. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so I didn't bend it a full 90. You can see that it's like a 105, I guess you would call that. 104, something like that. And I wanted to see if it would uh, would match up, and it, it, it looks like it kind of does. This door has a little bit more material. It shows me more what it's got to look like. So according to that angle right there, if I look at that angle and that angle, it looks like when that's laying flat on there, that pretty much matches the sheet metal pretty close. Kind of matches down there. Hard to see way down there. Oh, I've got tele, telephoto. There we go. So I zoomed in, and that looks like it's, I got the same angle. Okay, I got a little bit of a curve on this. I don't know if you can see it. It's. Let me see if I can get the angle right here. So yeah, it's got a curve. I'm going to see if I can fix that with this with the shrinker. Got the stretcher in, got to it out to the shrinker. So glad this is a quick change tool. If it wasn't, I'd, I'd have to have two of these. Maybe we'll make one red, spray red paint on one and blue on the other, just so I didn't screw them up. So, that's got a little bit of a curve, so I'm gonna to try to pull that out. Very slight. Try to work it. I'm just giving it a very slight. Oh, that's much better. Let's see if you can see down it. That's that's I think that's good enough. That's pretty straight. Can't believe how quick and easy that was to do. So now I'm gonna take it over and make the profile on the door opening. This is gonna wind up going in here in this orientation. And if you look at it, this straight piece of steel is not, the straight piece is straight. The cab itself is curved. So I gotta use the, the stretcher, actually the shrinker, and start pulling this in to where the profile will be right. Okay, so I bent up both pieces for the bottom of the door where uh, this, this edge here will wind up with the door skin clamped over it, cinched and hemmed. Um, I got them both bent and then I went ahead and I formed this one to the shape of the bottom of the cab, the rocker, where, where the bottom of the door will be. As you can see, it's got quite a curve to it. it took about 600 tries back and forth between the, the stretch and the shrink and I got, her, I got her pretty good, I think. So what I'm gonna do next is do this one for the driver's door. Now Connor and I looked these over earlier today and we're looking at this and I'm seeing a swale here, like a dip, and I thought, oh, that must be factory. Well, it's not <laughs> because you can see it. It's like, a, it's a dent there. Now, I don't know how that happened. Maybe somebody in the last, uh, what is it, 74 years was backing up with the door open, that's the driver's door. 
or maybe they banged into something a little bit and kinked that door. That's what I would think that they, they hit something on this end and it put a kink over here. Because even if you overextended the hinge, it would be the opposite. You know, if you open the door too far, uh, it would be the opposite kind of bend. So anyway, so that's got a kink in it. And I would have never noticed it except for I threw this door up on the bench to start working on this. This is the passenger side. And I'm looking at this and this is straight. You know, this is the same part. There's no kink here at all. This is straight. And it also makes a difference here because I'm noticing this is pretty straight up and down. If I look at this uh, this one, it's canted back just a little bit. It like goes that way a little bit. So I do have another door. The guy I bought this from dug up another door somewhere. I don't know where, but let's take a look at that one. So I already looked at this door uh, and stuck it up on its head here. Well, it's got markings on it too. These doors have old markings in them. And I don't, I gotta find out what that says. That's just too cool, it, you know? I wish that was in better shape and I could save it, but really it's, it's not something I can save. So it'll wind up getting painted and, and then we're gonna put a logo on it. Probably the Red Rock Barbecue logo, the barbecue we own. That's probably what we'll do and use the old truck for delivering barbecue once in a while or something. Anyway, all that to say, I'm looking at this and this door looks to be, overall it looks worse. I mean, it looks rustier on the inside. It's rustier up the top. Eh, I'll say about using this door instead because it doesn't seem to have the same kink in that area. But now I'm noticing there's, it's kinked here. So I guess that kind of does it. I think I'm just going to stick with the door I have and I'll, uh, I'll straighten that kink out. Yeah, you can really see it from here. As I'm walking up to it, I can see that this has really got a dent. So I guess what I'll do is I'll just try to straighten that out a little bit. Uh, maybe what I'll do is worry about that after I cut this piece out. So I'm marking lines where I'm going to make my cuts, but for right now, they're going to be the lines I go to to um, uh, not make the cut, but to actually make my pieces. So I got it marked there, and I got this one marked. I used that straight edge. Marked it right across so it skates here. Uh, as I do it, as I go across the line. You can see that line goes right through this rust hole. But what I'll do is I'll cut that out. I really want to save that. That's cool. So I'll, I'll probably cut that out and I'll, I'll put a patch there or something welded in to make it, make it nice. Um, <laughs> there's, there's plenty of work on this. This is not, this is the good door. This is, <laughs> this is the best door I have right here. So, um, but at least it's, get, it's giving me clues. And I'm able to find out, you know, just how far to go with this because I'm using, because I'm using this combination T-square I'm able to, you know, I just put it here and I figured it's going to go right to there. And then I've got this spot here. Well, I had it there. And I put a mark there. And then I put a mark up on this end. And then I use the straight edge to make that line. So now what I'm going to do is I'm, going to, I'm not going to move this thing. And I'm going to use it to mark out to cut my new pieces. And I'm going to cut two pieces while I'm at it. One for each door. Okay, so I'm getting things mocked up a little bit here. I got my bottom curve piece, which is gonna be the bottom edge of that door. I got my top piece here. That's gonna slide over and be the top edge, but I need a piece to go between them. So, so I gotta cut a, cut a piece and I'll, I'll just cut two of them. So I have one for each door. So what I'm gonna to wanna to do is have a piece that'll fill that in, but I don't wanna waste a bunch of material. That's gonna be a curve cut because that, that's got a curve to it. So I gotta cut a piece that'll be the widest width and probably a little bit more just for safety measure. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, well, I don't think about it, I could probably bend that. No, that'd be a pain. Huh, I don't know, we'll see. Anyway, <laughs> talking, talking to myself. So I gotta cut a piece here that'll be about, oh, it looks like three inches would be plenty. So I'll cut two three inch pieces. And then I'll, I'll wind up scribing that onto it, trimming it, and then welding this to it. So the piece will be all solid. Hold them, and when I weld the back side, I'll be able to grind it off nice and rounded. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. I think I got it figured out. Okay. So I got this cut out. I got this trimmed up. So now this, these pieces will go together pretty nice. I just got to 
tack it on that end and then just work my way. Probably tack it on that end. Yeah, I'll put like five tacks on it just for now, just to keep it in place. And it, you can see that it lops up on this side because I got to kind of follow the curve of this because this curve is what follows the door and everything. So this will have to follow that. So everything's going to have a little curve. I'm hoping it all comes out right. I'm thinking it should. Um, that curve should basically match the curve of the door skin. So we're going to see how that all works out. Thanks for watching guys. I'm going to probably, uh, I'll name this, this video is going to be part one of uh, Studio Baker door repair, rust repair, rust rebuilding, whatever. And uh, so this will be part one and it probably looks to me like I'm probably going to make two or three, maybe four parts out of this before I get this all done.